Hi, I'm Dr. Molly Gebrian, and you are watching part three in this series of videos on spaced practicing. So if you missed the first two parts, please go watch those first. Otherwise, you'll be a little confused what we're talking about. The links are below. If you've watched them, welcome to part three. So hopefully I have at least intrigued you that maybe this taking a break thing is something that you should try. And so now if you're like me, you're probably wondering, okay, like what, how, what kind of breaks am I supposed to be taking? How long should the breaks be? That kind of thing. In general, the research has shown that if you're doing something complex, playing an instrument, you want to think in terms of days and weeks of breaks rather than minutes and hours. So breaks over a longer period of time than just within one day. So that's the first thing. Second thing is if you have to learn this material and retain this material over a long period of time, that is more than a week, that you want to use something called an expanding schedule. So for us as musicians, it's unusual that we would get the music on Monday and play a solo recital on Friday, right? Maybe if you're in a professional orchestra, yes, you have less than a week to prepare the music, but if you're preparing something that you have more than a week, which is most of the time for, for us as classical musicians, you want to use something called an expanding schedule. So an expanding schedule is at the beginning, you do it say every day. So you, the only break you're taking is like when you're sleeping, for instance, or maybe little breaks within the day, but then you'll take a whole day off and then two days off and then three days off. So the breaks get bigger and bigger and bigger. The breaks expand. Um, I have one more study from surgical training that I want to share with you that shows how this sort of expanding schedule can work to your benefit. In this study, they had two groups of surgical students train over three days. So they did spaced training, right? They didn't do it all in one day. They did their training over three days. One group practiced again one week later. So they had three days of training. That's this T1, T2, T3. Then they didn't do anything. They didn't train for a week. Then they had another practice a week later. And then a week after that, they, they were tested. They had a, a performance. The other group trained for three days and then they didn't practice for two weeks and they were just tested in that same performance situation two weeks later. So if you look at these graphs, if you look at the black squares, that's the group that got that extra practice one week after their, after their final training. So they had three days of training and then they had a practice one week later. You can see that they retain their same level of performance when it's looking at number of errors, that's the graph on the left, and they actually get better in terms of the amount of time they take, that's the graph on the right. So they take a whole week off and they don't lose anything in terms of the number of errors and they actually get faster in that week. And then when you look at that square group, that black square group at the test a week later, they are even better. So they're faster and they have even fewer errors. So it seems like taking that week off, having another practice session meant that they improved from their last day of training. If you look now at the group that didn't get that extra practice block, that's the, the white triangles, they do worse on that performance two weeks later because they didn't have the extra training in the week in between. So two weeks was too long. They forgot a little bit of what they learned in that two weeks. What's the perfect schedule, right? I've thrown out all sorts of different numbers in terms of this many hours break, this many days break, a week break, two weeks break. What's the perfect schedule? Like I said, there is no perfect schedule because it depends on what you're learning, how long you have to learn it, how complicated it is. But there are some general principles that you can use to figure out what's gonna be a good schedule for you. The first thing is the more complex the task, the more spaced out the practice session should be. So like I said, think days or weeks rather than hours or minutes. If the time between the practice sessions is too short, if the break you take is too short, the reconstruction that has to take place in your brain can't happen. So like we were talking about with long-term potentiation, you have to give your brain a chance to do the construction it needs to do. And you need to give it long enough time to actually do that construction. But if the break is too long, the memory trace disappears entirely and then you start over again. So you have to find a balance between enough time for your brain to do what it has to do, but not so much time that you forget altogether. 
There seems to be more of a penalty though for breaks that are too short than breaks that are too long. So err on the, the side of taking too long a break. And like I said, it seems like expanding schedules are the best unless the time between the first practice and the performance is really short within a week. So don't just practice something once in a day. Come back to it two or three times within the same day with breaks in between. But don't overdo it. It seems like three times is enough. That study we looked at with the long-term potentiation, after they gave a fourth round of stimulation, it didn't make any difference. Um, so three times within a day seems to be enough. If you can play it well, leave it alone and don't practice it at all for at least a few days. You're not going to lose it. It's, you're not going to forget it. It might even get better in the interim. In fact, I will say from my own experience, it will get better in the interim. If you are frustrated with something and you've done everything you can think of to make it better, again, don't practice it for a few days so your brain can stabilize the practicing you've done. It may be that your brain needs you to take a break so it can do some reconstruction. Then when you come back to it, you'll have a much easier time. And then finally, increase the number of days between practices of a certain passage or a certain piece, the better you get at playing it. So the better you get, the more days off from that passage you want to take. All right, so I realize that this is like really scary for musicians, right? Like I'm gonna take a week off from practicing something? No, that's a terrible idea. So one of my quarantine projects back in the spring was to do some practicing experiments on myself. So I've known about this research for a long time, but I was frankly scared to try it because even though I trust the research, it is so counter to our culture as classical musicians and if it backfired, that's really bad, right? If I tried practicing this way and I took a week, two weeks off from something, and then I wasn't prepared for my concert, that's really not a good situation. And I was not willing to risk that. But then the world shut down and we didn't have any concerts. And so I figured, okay, this is the perfect time to try this kind of practicing because if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter because I don't have any concerts anyways. So I did a number of experiments on myself and long story short, I will never go back to the way that I used to practice, which is practicing everything every day. Um, now I take very large breaks, a week, two weeks off between practicing certain things. After trial and error with different schedules and different length breaks, this is what I came up with as working best for me. So in the schedule, first I practice something three days in a row. That's the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, red, practice, practice, practice. Then I take a day off, and this is not taking an entire day off from practicing. This is just taking a day off from practicing that particular passage or phrase. So I practice that phrase three days in a row, then I take a day off. Then I practice it every other day three times. So that's the Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, practice, practice, practice in blue. Then I take a week off and I practice that passage three days in a row. So that's the green Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, practice, practice, practice. Then I take two weeks off and then I practice it three more days in a row. So that's the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, practice, practice, practice in purple. A couple things I want to say about this schedule. First off, notice all the blank spaces. That's time when you can practice other music. Again, when I'm taking a day off or a week off from something, I'm not taking a day completely off from practicing altogether. I'm just taking a day off from practicing that particular passage or phrase. So that's the first thing. The second thing about this schedule is that it was miraculous in how much more quickly I was able to learn music. People that know me know that I am an incredibly diligent practicer. I never take days off. I love to practice, so I don't like to take days off. But this has forever changed how I practice. I noticed a huge difference in how much more quickly I could learn music this way. I also noticed a huge difference in how solid things felt. And I don't know, like I would come back from taking, you know, a week off or two weeks off and stuff was just there. It was kind of amazing. Even things that when I left them, I was like, oh man, this does not sound good. I'd come back a week later. Hey, it sounds great. It feels easy. Because I had given my brain a chance to do whatever it had to do to make um, learning that passage much more easy and to make playing that passage much easier for me. 
to keep track of my practicing schedule and what I should be practicing on which day, I have been using Google Calendars. When I started this, I was using an elaborate sticky note system, but Google Calendars works much better and it's also portable. So I'm gonna show you now how I use my Google Calendar system. So um, on any given day, I have a list of the pieces, the sections and the pieces I need to practice that day. And you can see I color code it by piece. So for any given piece, any given section of that piece, I have written down the dates on which I previously practiced it. So this section of this piece, I practiced on December 20th, 21st, 22nd. Then I skipped a day and now I'm doing every other day. So I practiced it December 24th, 26th, and I have to practice it tomorrow, the 28th. After I practice it tomorrow, I will go in and I will add the date on which I practiced it, December 28th. And now I need to take a week off from this spot. So now I'm going to move it on my calendar to a week from the 28th, which is uh, January 4th. I say save. Um, and then on January 4th, there's that spot. I need to practice it that date. So you can see that for most of January, my schedule is empty. That's because I don't put things on the day on which they need to be practiced until I have practice them previously. So everything else on the 28th, once I practice all these spots, they will get moved to the day I need to practice them next. So each day I just open up my calendar for that day. It tells me what to practice. So all these dates that are currently empty, by the time I get to them, they will definitely have things on them that I need to practice. They just haven't been added yet because I'm not there yet. One thing that was uh, sort of overwhelming to my students when I talked to them about this is they thought that I planned out this whole schedule, like, okay, I have to practice this passage these three days, and then these days, and then these days, all at once at the beginning. No, I don't do that. I, you know, however much I can get through today practicing well, and usually it's not much. I end up practicing far less music in a given day because I know that at some point I'm only going to be able to do it once or twice and then I'm going to have to take two weeks off or something. So, you know, say I practice the opening phrase today. I'm learning a brand new piece. I decided to start with the opening phrase, say it's eight bars. So I'll practice that, get it as good as I can today. And then in my Google calendar, I will write down the name of the piece, measures one through eight, and then I'll put it in my calendar for tomorrow. So I don't plan the whole thing out ahead of time. I just do it one day at a time, whatever I've practiced that day, I put it in my calendar and then I put it in for the next day that I need to practice it, whatever that day may be. Good luck, try this out. I know it's scary, but I promise you it works. Um, if you want to ask me questions about this method of practicing, feel free to contact me. I will put my email right here for you. You can email me there and I will get back to you. Happy practicing.